That's not what him Paisley thinks. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ said. But if you go on rejecting Christ, if you go on refusing my Savior, you'll die in your sins and go to hell forevermore. Fellow Protestants, this victory is not the victory of man. It's not the victory of Ian Paisley, nor even of the Protestant electors. This is the confounding of the prophet of Beal, like Elijah of old. He stood alone. Last Thursday, the Reverend Ian and Paisley, tonight, Doctor of Divinity, was elected to the Northern Ireland Parliament as MP for Banside. Tomorrow, and he takes his seat. Tonight, World in Action tonight. examines the man who leads the militant Protestants of Ulster. You can fool some of the people some of the times, but do not fool all of the people all the time. Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? some holy water and said, that'll please my people. And when the Queen flew over Buckingham Palace, she threw out a Union Jack and she says, that'll please my people. And when the plane came over Ulster, I threw out the Pope and I said, that'll please the Lord. <laughs> Thank you. 
problem is your water. Mm -hmm. you that. But the biggest problem of all is our own country to keep it and retain it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Just the three votes. Mm -hmm. okay. You know what to do with it. Yeah. Good. Morris, where do you want to go now? Right. And he, he's away to the House of Lords, and what does he care about the people in Ireland? Nothing. But if I was in, I'd get your water in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Christian faith, to believe this Bible to be the Word of God and the sole rule of faith and practice. And I received Christ, and uh, by receiving Him, I became a new creature. I was born again in biblical language. Old things passed away, all things became new. But this is a work of grace, not of works. I'm not going to heaven because I have been baptized, or because I take communion, or because I preach or because I try to live up to the standard of Christianity. I'm going to heaven simply by the grace of God. And this, of course, and I'd like to emphasize this, this is where I stand, that all men, whether they be Roman Catholic or Protestant, uh, whether they be Jew or Hottentot, need to be born into God's family. All men are not children of God. All men are children of wrath. <laughs> Humor is the greatest blessing God has given us. And I think they, uh, I don't think that Puritanism at all uh, makes a man sour. I think that Puritanism makes a man pure. And I think purity leads to health, and health leads to joy. We demand that the specials be recalled and that they once again give protection to this country. One man in the House of Commons yesterday told the truth. That was Edith Powell. And Edith Powell said, you can blame the government of I would say I was a conservative. But if conservatism is tied up to the landed gentry and um, to uh, things like that, I mean, I believe in the principle of trade unions. And I have seen in my own constituency results of the landed gentry, who all were out trying to influence their, the people that are under them to vote against Paisley. But that day is over, thank God. The worker no longer will vote the way the boss wants them. Are you a Democrat? Well, you believe in democracy. Well, what do you mean by democracy? I mean, uh, if you define a Democrat, perhaps you could. Well, in very simple terms, uh, majority rule. Yes, I certainly do. So I would hardly stand for Parliament if I didn't. I mean, the fact a man stands, he, he submits himself to the, the 
democracy, we might use that term. So that um, if the Roman Catholics gained a majority in Northern Ireland and voted in democratic pr procedure for reunion with the South, you would accept that as the democratic will? Well, that, of course, now you're coming to a very different situation. You're not coming to a change of government now. You're coming to a change of country. And uh, I, w I certainly uh, could not give a blank check to that one. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would your evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. very closely with the Lord Jesus Christ. We started down the road with a congregation of 250 and we have a congregation now on a Sunday night of 3,000 and surely this is the work of God. One word that always comes to me when I think of him is sincere. He's absolutely and 100% sincere. I know many Roman Catholic who are very great friends of mine and we do love these people and we would love to see them saved. God's man for today. Where do we go from here? I want to talk tonight first of all about where do we go from here constitutionally. I want to make a few comments tonight upon the national situation. Situation of this problem where is this problem headed? This is not a battle between mere political factions and mere political parties. What is at stake tonight in this province is our very heritage and the constitution of our land. Make no mistake about it. And I'm asking myself tonight, where do we go from here constitutionally? We have a government in this province that does not govern. A member of this church took seriously ill in the hospital, the Royal Victoria Hospital. A message was sent by telephone to the family that the father of the home was dying. They were to go immediately. And the police brought the message. And you know what the police said? They said, we're sorry. We can't take you to the hospital because the hospital, as far as we are concerned, is in a no-go area. And our car is not allowed to go there. We have a situation in this problem where there are two states in operation and two governments in operation. And we are breeding because of the apathy and the lying and the deceit 
of the government of Stormont, we are breeding a monster in our midst which someday will be uncontrollable. I wonder what six nights of multi ambulances were doing in the heart of the Falls Road this week, all parked together early in the morning. I wonder what they were transporting. It definitely wasn't sick people that were bringing in. I have a very shrewd idea that they were bringing in the sinews of a rebellion that shortly will break out in this province in fury unimaginable by those who have been sitting chloroformed by the deceits of the Stormont Parliament. police force that is not allowed to function. An army in our midst that has been briefed and I have seen the briefing that the army have got and they have been briefed to look on the Protestant population as the troublemakers at this present time especially the Orange Institution and the Ulster Special Constabulary that was and the Free Presbyterian Church. Don't forget the Paisleyites. Yes. So you have a government that will not govern. Chichester Clark made a great song about what General Freeland said. He was just going to go over to Westminster, and according to the press, you would have thought that the head of General Sir Ian Freeland was going to roll. But no such thing happened. He met Jim Callahan, but he didn't meet Jim Callahan on his own. He met Mrs. Shirley Williams. Who is she? She's a Roman Catholic. She has been appointed by Harold Wilson as the minister responsible for Northern Ireland affairs at Westminster. And the destiny of this land at the moment through Westminster is in the hand of a Roman Catholic who has been healed by the Roman Catholic press as a devout member of the church. This land's future is not safe in the hand of any papist. Let's make it straight tonight. And Chichester Clark says it's very satisfactory. Very satisfactory. Just two words. He's not saying that about the band side election at the moment. <laughs> very serious looking gentleman. What's wrong with you? Are you very, they're very serious looking. Vote Protestant Unionists. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Oh, the car's all over. We sent 16 away together there. Protestant voters, vote Paisley. Vote Protestant Unionist today. Hello, sir. Hello. How's that going? Well, Jennifer, when did the, the, the drawing room and put on the, um, you know, the radiogram? When did you get the wee ones off? Yeah. Uh-huh. And he's not too bad. Uh -huh. Well, listen, sweetheart, I can't be long because Daddy's rushing now. Well, that's all right, Pat. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. I know. Oh, well, that's all right. 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 Where do we go from here, Ecclesiastic? We hear the siren cry of the ecumenical movement. We can see the lines of the ecumenical movement at work. And we can see the plots and the planning and the purposes. The ecumenical standard bearer in South Antrim is Mr. Corgay. He has been enraged at the fact that there are so many Protestants in South Ankara. May their tribe increase before Thursday. <laughs> I want
want to say something now? And I want to give the lie to Mr. Clark. Mr. Beatty is well able to handle him. There's no need for me to come into the field. But seeing he mentioned my, ma my name and my friends, I want to tell him tonight that he's a liar. The free Presbyterians don't throw petrol bombs. I want to tell them that tonight. I want them to find one free Presbyterian ever caught with a petrol bomb in his hand or ever charged with such an offense. Let them be produced. And I want to say that this church and those with whom I associate condemn all subversivites. And we have always condemned them. Matters not from what side they come. They are to be condemned. And condemned without reservation. And we have always taken the stand and please God we always shall. How dare him smear free Presbyterians as fascists. This church has more ex-service men in its membership than any other church in this land. And these free Presbyterians fought the Nazi menace and fought the scourge of fascism. And I condemn the action of those who laid bombs in Mr. Morgan's property. I condemn that unreservedly. These actions ought not to be done. But I want to tell you that I know it was no Protestant that did such a thing. But I'll tell you something tonight. I'll tell you the Unionist Party wouldn't be beyond doing that to get sympathy for their candidate. I'll tell you that, Frank. Yes. received them. You don't receive them as a church member, you know. You don't receive them as a baptized church member either. You receive them as a poor, lost, guilty, hell-deserving sinner. It's the way you receive them. And there is no difference, no difference between a loyal Protestant and an idolatrous Romanist when it comes to the way of salvation. There is no difference between a staunch orange man and a staunch Hibernian when it comes to the way of salvation. Let's preach this message. Accept the man. Be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. <laughs> A loud healer. A the priest not got a loud healer. here.